how would you describe the understanding of data? How has it changed with the rise of the internet, with all these new technologies, and what are the challenges for? Who wants to go first? If you like it, because this topic is uh, for me very interesting, because I realized throughout the last years that the people are in a very special state, especially the decision makers. They don't understand any longer the complexity of the data they are dealing with, and they are heavily searching for data of second order in a way, data showing patterns and not only elements of something. And this is necessary because the people are no longer able to deal with the complexity really, and I think much of the the, uh, the fact that the people are trying to participate, the normal people, the citizens, uh, the co-workers and so on, is just due to the fact that they realize that the decision makers are in trouble. This is what is quite obvious for them. It's a very hopeful thing. Yeah, sure. Think? Um, I, I, so there, there's a complaint against data, against open data, which I think is real, mm. um, that has to do with the oversimplifying, and then there's mm. another side, which is the over. And the oversimple side is that um, people who either don't understand the data or they have some political motivation mm. will, uh, as more and more data becomes available, will find the one piece of data, mm. whether it's a number or it's mm. a, an old quotation, mm. and use that out of context. Um, and this is a terrible side effect of open data. And I mm. think it is a side effect of that one. But, um, and on the other side, I'm actually... Um, getting uh, very excited about the increasing recognition that the complexity of the data is actually a, uh, a reflection of the overwhelming complexity of life and mm. the world. That, it, that it, The data is beginning to reflect the fact that we are not going to be able to get a perfect and easy reflection of the world in the data. It's just too hard, too much. But then the, the moment the people are searching for new kinds of data, so they even make it more complex. They are even searching for new ways to look at data. And the big question I always have is how can we turn data into information which is relevant? Well, that's, yes, that's always going to be the, mm. the issue, um, especially if the world is complex and chaotic, as it seems, as it seems to be. Mm. Uh, do you, there's this um, uh, a program called Eureka, mm -hmm. which comes out of Cornell. It's E-U-R-E-Q-A, so mm -hmm. wanna, mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to give it a unique name, because it's mm -hmm. the internet. Um, and it looks through complex mm -hmm. data and derives formula mm -hmm. uh, and equations mm -hmm. um, from it, some of which they're accurate, mm -hmm. but humans can't understand why they're accurate. Mm -hmm. And to me, that this is absolutely fascinating. We're in a position now where we have so much data and such strong tools that we mm -hmm. can uh, know something, but not understand it. Knowing without understanding? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, so here's <laughs> an equation that works, and we don't know why. Okay. Um, yeah. You're just uh, looking at the effects of what is here. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. it's the, the status mm. of the world is so complex mm. that we're at the point where we can have a reliable, true mm. uh, relationship, mm. but not understand why it works that way. Yeah, but so we have problems because uh, we have to predict things, we have to in a way act in a complex world and the big question I have always is, is the world really over complex? Is it really the case that the world is chaotic? Or is it the case that we are measuring in the wrong direction, that we don't have the data reducing the complexity? Because you know, uh, if you look at the, the human perception for example, we are, uh, we, we are getting information from the surrounding, which is, uh, as uh, Gibson called it, higher order variables. So there are some variables in the data stream which give me the opportunity to act uh, by complexity reduction, but just by putting out the right data. You know, for example, if uh, animals, they are coming down from the heaven and they are approaching the surface of the, the water and they have some data they collect which enable them to put the, f the wings together at the right point. So the big question I always have is, is it really the right notion to say it's too chaotic, it's too complex, or is it just the question, what can we do? What do we have to measure to make it less complex? Is there something in the world which helps us, which we haven't detected now, or where we are not so good in detecting? Uh, 
Uh, so I'm sure that we agree that the world is fully determined. It's yeah. the, if there is chaos, it's not because it's uh, an indeterminacy, maybe at the subatomic level. But the, mm. uh, the smoke curls in a particular mm. way because of mm. a wide variety of factors. The question is whether those are, in any practical sense, knowable. And if they are knowable, do they mm. reduce to an equa- a predictable equation? Mm-hmm. Um, so here's here's something like evidence that um, well either that's not well, I'll tell you what the evidence is. So mm. um, system or I have a very casual layperson's understanding of systems biology. Okay. Um, the study mm. of, of say uh, uh, cells in particular, mm-hmm. um, treating them as signaling systems, so that uh, you want to see what happens on the outside of the cell wall, mm. what chemicals touch it, and um, mm. what happens on the inside. And we can start, we have been um, tracking those relationships. Mm. And they are incredibly complex. So a single mm. signal, okay. so to speak, can, mm-hmm. it can be a cascade. Yep. Yep. Um, and so we can predict, mm-hmm. we can see what this chemical is likely to do there, but we don't have an overall, a human brain can't figure it out. A computer yeah, there's this point. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when, when I'm looking at this complexity, um, and when I'm looking not at biological data or chemical data, but at what human beings are doing, then you can be sure that the individual human being is always producing order. So the only problem we have is that in this network thing, we produce nonlinear feedback loops and things like this, and then we, we are putting in uh, unpredictability. But in the basic, there's whenever you're dealing with people, you deal with ordered states, because the brain cannot do chaos. Even at the social level? Yeah, you know, when, when I look at the social level, then some topic like culture steps in. Culture is something we produce in discourse to stabilize the individual possibilities, to, to make it not so complex. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to deal with each other. If we have not one cultural background, then we are not able to act with each other. So whenever I'm looking at human beings, I have the strong feeling that they do anything to reduce complexity by having some basic ideas with each other, by sharing some values or doing things like this, to be able to act any longer. And this is what is, in my opinion, so interesting with the internet, because it's first of the time that we connect with people we don't share a culture with. Yeah, and so this we, makes we a real problem. Huh? We don't have, it makes a huge problem. We yeah. don't have shared norms. Even within a culture, the ability of people in different contexts within mm-hmm. that culture to understand the possibilities of misunderstanding are so much broader than the possibilities of understanding. Yeah. Yeah. It happens all the time, yeah. and yet we still often do manage to yeah. um, sort of coordinate our norms enough that we can make, we either make some progress or we just give up and go to the next site because mm-hmm. that's very easy to do too. But if you go up a level from mm-hmm. that, and I think what you're saying is very mm-hmm. true and very wise, um, the predictability of social interactions um, that involve seeing the interaction of economics and education and uh, epidemiology and Mm -hmm. every field of human study and Mm -hmm. involvement uh, would seem to suggest, at least to me, that Mm -hmm. um, the attempt to um, predict human behavior at at the broad scale is limited, very limited. Within particular particular yeah. norms, yeah. yes, you can. But you know, but the interesting fact is that when you are part of the system, then you can act in the system as if it is predictable. So it's only when you are standing away from the system, looking at the system, trying to understand all these complex uh, connections which are there, then you are lost. But if you're part of the system, you're not lost. You know, this is what we can do as a human being. Whenever I'm stepping into a social community, I'm trying to be part of this social community. We have discourse with, with each other. We are trying to find out the rules behind. We are trying to find out the values. And after some time, we have the feeling that we can tune in. And then something very special is happening. I'm part of something which is far bigger than I am. And it's not intellectual understanding which enables me to act there. But I know that I'm right or wrong when I'm in this situation. But this is what you call culture, isn't it? Yeah, in the end, it's what, what you can call culture, if you w- would agree that we yes, take exactly. the, yeah. the topic like this, yeah. Yeah, because it's just a definition. It's, oh, what, what do we mean with information? We can have so different understandings of information. But in this case, I would call this culture. Yeah, and and uh, no, I agree that 
we need to have the belief hmm. that our actions have predictable results, or otherwise we, we simply wouldn't act. We wouldn't have the is it, is it necessary to predict when I'm acting? This is my question. Well, it's the necessary yes. Yes. <laughs> Clear answer. Okay. Next yes. topic. Yes. Next topic. Um, some sense of that you know, you have a belief yeah. that your action will have a particular sort of result if it were yeah. truly chaotic. And This is in the case when I'm acting in an intellectual way, where I say I am serving for a target, I'm searching for a target, I try to achieve this target, then we are in the thinking of more or less command and control, normal regulation. There is uh, an actual value and the target value, and I try to bring this together. But if I'm part of a higher dynamic, then it's not necessary to um, to think that the system is always only as intelligent as I am. Well, Systems have their own intelligence. Uh, so first of all, I, um, I want to know more what you yeah. mean by higher dynamic. Um, I want to be clear. Mm -hmm. I have in mind somebody who um, orders a coffee in a restaurant. Which okay. is not a very intellectual act. Not really. <laughs> but it arrived, nevertheless, the coffee uh, yeah. So we were <laughs> not able thought, to predict, yeah, okay. <laughs> if that. you yeah. thought that there was only a yeah. uh, you know, random chance that ordering coffee yeah. would get you coffee, and mm -hmm. equal chance if you didn't order, you wouldn't mm -hmm. order. So you have, we work towards the future. Mm -hmm. I'm actually mm -hmm. being, I hate to say it, somewhat Heideggerian mm -hmm. here in a, in a simple sense. Mm -hmm. We um, have projects in the world, mm -hmm. those projects assume a belief in some degree of confidence, depending mm -hmm. on the situation, mm -hmm. that our actions will have particular uh, results. And we're, mm -hmm. frequently we're wrong, but more often mm -hmm. we're right. But there's a basic question. Even to have the idea to have a coffee is depending on the situation I'm stepping in. When I'm coming here, yeah. I have different ideas yes, because no, I'm in a different yeah. surrounding, yes. I have with different people, and then there is something emerging in my mind what I can do in this surrounding. So I'm more or less going from one world to the other. and. When I know the basic rules of this world I'm stepping in, then I'm, I'm able to act there. Yes. And I don't think that it's so complex, you know, because otherwise, if it would be always so complex, we wouldn't be able to do what we have done throughout the last centuries and, and uh, the last time of building up our cultures. Well, so so let, let me, I think, rephrase that in light of what you said earlier to make sure I'm yeah. understanding. It, it mm -hmm. is immensely complex with the human brain and the human, the human being mm -hmm. Um, constantly works to reduce that complexity so we can order a damn coffee. We know we're, we're in a place where they have coffee mm -hmm. and it's we can order it. works or whatever. And so we mask the mm -hmm. blooming, buzzing confusion, mm -hmm. as one of the James brothers mm -hmm. called it, and it, in order to, um, to be able to act mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. So at the higher order that you refer to, mm -hmm. um, tell me more what you mean. Yeah, the first thing is um, what I said is the individual brain as I knew it from my own experiments I did when I was in, more in the science part, I always was astonished that whatever we see, we try to produce an order in this. Even if you show people white noise, they produce order. And if you look at the brain dynamics, there are seldom phases where the brain is able to put in something like a chaotic attractor. But normally, whatever you do, even if you try to be random, you can't. So we have a strong system which is always trying to reduce complexity by order formation. This is in the individual part. And then the next part steps in, how can we work together? And it seems to me that uh, this constructivistic view that we are all separated is only half the truth. So if we are just looking at the individual brain from the neurophysiologic part, we are just neglecting the idea of this social system which is in itself again an ordered state which is producing states of order, what we call culture in the end. There is something happening in between us. Something is emerging when people are coming together. And the big problem I see in the moment is that if you look at the internet, we have new forms of connectivity which are enhancing the scale in a millisecond. It's so big that there is no opportunity to create something like a cultural background. Because I'm dealing with people I'm not sharing a cultural background with. And then we have a problem of these decontextual information. The information is not containing the context where it has come from. Therefore, it's very, very difficult to produce something like an ordered state there. So I think that this idea of complexity is stepping in when we are enhancing the, um, uh, the, um, yeah, the, the range, the scale of connectivity. So. It's not a basic problem of culture to be too complex, it's a problem of the way we do it in the moment. 
So on the one hand, there is the, um, I think, justified fear that our way out of this predicament mm -hmm. that you described is that we simply stop encountering those who don't share our context, our share okay, our culture. This would be a danger. So there is no challenge any longer. Um, yes, and so an opportunity is yeah. missed. And this, mm -hmm. this is, a, as, a, as you know, a very mm -hmm. active topic of discussion on the internet. And it's mm -hmm. extremely hard to figure out um, the extent to which this is happening, the extent to which we are getting worse or better. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, um, sure. uh, there is a possibility mm -hmm. that um, a shared culture will emerge. We're obviously at a very early stage here, and that yeah, uh, okay. uh, so uh, that's the fear. The f in mm -hmm. fact, let me express the fear more mm -hmm. strongly. Mm -hmm. The fear yeah. is um, that um, uh, and, uh, well, the fear is that in fact, because of this wealth of opportunity to engage with other cultures, mm. we act. We have more choices to also engage with people who are like us, who are within sure. our culture, yeah. and in so doing we will um, uh, reinforce our own beliefs and in mm -hmm. fact become more extreme in our own beliefs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Cass Sunstein is the name that's mm -hmm. most associated okay, with this. the echo chamber thing. Uh, exactly, yeah. it's the echo chamber mm -hmm. argument. Yeah. So that um, having this, this open chaotic environment in mm -hmm. fact will make us more closed more down close. than ever. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. one extreme. Would be a danger. Yeah. Yes, and there's some evidence that mm -hmm. this happens. Mm -hmm. But there's an interesting thing. How can I realize in this world, in this interconnected world, that the other one is my kind. Even this is difficult. Absolutely. <laughs> so yes, finding areas to find the out. echo chambers is even difficult. To recognize that you're in an echo chamber, or no, to, to to detect these. Because if you're in a, in a world where the context is no longer close to the information, where by hyperlink. The, the information is decontextualized, so I don't know the real background behind. Then it's even hard to detect someone who is uh, a kindred, kindred form of people, close to me, same way of thinking. Even this is difficult. And, and in fact, there's an expense to it. There's so many people you could connect with who are so obviously like you, they're using the same slang language, you know, okay. all the signifiers mm -hmm. are there, mm -hmm. like having to go to the effort to mm -hmm recognize the context mm -hmm. of someone mm -hmm. else and find the similarities mm -hmm. can be an expensive, psychically expensive mm -hmm. thing to do. It's much easier just to hang out with the people. So th yeah. this, that's the mm -hmm. echo chamber argument um, and uh, the danger. And mm -hmm. at the other side, um, there's a uh, utopian ideal. Mm -hmm. And when I call it utopian, I don't mean mm -hmm. it's unrealistic. I, I don't but know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, that we will, over time, develop a more of a shared culture than we had before that we will become both more open to difference mm -hmm. and that we will mm -hmm. develop mm -hmm. you know, a, a passing around mm -hmm. of um, cute cat photos. Mm -hmm. Things that generally, much of the world likes cute cat photos. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm here okay. so, sort of borrowing uh, Some basics yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> and we basics. probably are wired. I think yeah. Stephen Jay Gould made the yeah, case yeah, yeah. we are wired to, yeah. Uh, yeah. to like things that look like yeah. cats and infants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is even true for some basic ethical questions. So if you bring people in a dilemma, you can find that they try to solve it all over the world in the same way. So there is something we can rely on, something like a, a very basic form of culture. This is true. I think you're ready for coffee, yeah. huh? Are, Are you, you ready for coffee? Uh, sure. Whatever you like. I mean, 